Hello and welcome to Around the Wickets on the Papare.com. Well, it's lovely to be back with you once again. And I know the World Cup is over, but we cannot stop talking about it. Especially that World Cup final. What an outstanding game. The question is, is it the best ever ODI game that the world has ever seen? I certainly think so. Because, you know, they couldn't find a result even on a super over. And to me, the irony is, England didn't win it. New Zealand didn't lose it. So then what happened? <laughs> it's the rules that made sure that England ultimately were the World Cup champions. Anyway, it was a magnificent game. And to talk about it and a little bit more, I got Fabis Maruf. First and foremost, what a game it was. Indeed, Roshan, you hit the nail in the coffin. You said no, 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 none of the team lost. I think New Zealand won a lot of hearts and the way they played. And uh, it just was uh, icing on the cake, World Cup final. Brilliant uh, World Cup last six, seven weeks. We thoroughly enjoyed watching it. And a final, which will I, I don't think I will ever forget it, uh, especially the last ball bowl by Geoffrey Archer. And the emotions, mm. seeing the uh, emotions by the uh, Black Caps, which was, uh, you know, it definitely shed a tear or two. So I think all, all, all together, a memorable uh, World Cup. See, yeah, I agree. My question here is the way it was decided. Eventually, Maha, it was decided on the boundaries yeah. of the entire game. But if you look at the final score first, England were all out, 241. Exactly. And New Zealand were 241 for eight. Now, there used to be a rule those days, I remember, okay. if the scores were tied, the teams with the lesser wickets. number of wickets are declared the winner. Now, I know teams have, I mean, rules have changed. I'm not going there. But I just want to pick your brain. Compared to what it was, is it fair to come up with a rule like this, the n number of boundaries in a game? What is your thought as an ex-player? I think in my personal opinion, I, I don't believe in this rule. Okay. Because it it's purely came for the 2020 uh, mm. matches. But coming into a one-day game and especially deciding on, on highest number of boundaries to pick a World Cup winner, I think it's just not on. I guess, you know, both the teams deservedly should have been joint champs, in my opinion. Absolutely. But uh, overall, uh, you know, rules are, rules are there for... A reason, as you said, I remember those days I used to play. So we used to talk in the uh, dressing room, mentioning that keep wickets in hand if the mm. you know, game is tighter, to, yeah. so that you know we can win the games, win games having wickets in hand. So whereas nowadays games have changed, and I, 2020 again, I mean those rules have uh, taken over. And to be honest, I was surprised. You know, I didn't know the rule to be honest till the last moment there was going to be super row. So when I when I got to know that there is a super row, I was like, you know, just not on in my opinion. Yeah, it was a tough call. It was a really tough pill for the Kiwis to solo. But let's try and focus a little bit on some individual brilliance. Now, Kane Williamson stood out. Brilliant captaincy. They called him. They, they, they thought they were high school. But I'm not sure he was high school at all <laughs> in that game, though he's, he looked that way. And then the impact man, Ben Stokes. Now, statistically, statistically, people will argue that Shaki Bal Hassan, is a bit all round or the yeah. top all round in the world. But looking at what Ben Stokes did, what, what, I mean, I know it's not fair. It's not fair. Statistically, Shakib has done brilliantly. Yeah. But this is an impactful innings. Now, which all rounder would you want to have in the side? Was it, <laughs> is it a Shakib or, or a Ben Stokes in, in this mood? <laughs> it's a hard one to say. answer, <laughs> Roshan. I mean, both both of both of them have a brilliant work. I mean, Ben Stokes, the amount of effort he put in yes. yesterday. I mean, you got to give him all the credit where, where he's due. Mm. I think Shakib Balasan, you know, 600 plus runs, 11 wickets for Bangladesh in uh, eight games. I think. I thought. I mean, he was phenomenal. But just that on the day, Ben Stokes for me, carrying that being a fast bowling all round. I mean, he's a top fast, the, probably the best in the world at the moment. If you take Hardik Pandya, Ben Stokes, I think Ben Stokes. Will, Mm -hmm. Little uh, classier mm -hmm. and uh, more more consistent when it comes to performances and and he's a big big match player whenever whenever the team needs him in a big match and he has mm -hmm. delivered so you know Shakib unlucky I think you know even personally I thought he will have a big say but uh, overall as you you know as you correctly said Roshan in some some World Cup that we will never forget now don't get me wrong I'm not in any way devaluing what Shakib Balasan has done it was phenomenal as. Pavis Maharu said outstanding. I think the difference to me was the team that the two players played in. Yeah. Because Ben Stokes had players around him and he was he was able to thrive while Shaki had to do it almost single-handedly. Anyway, fantastic effort. But is this the best ever one-day game that we have seen? Now, two games come readily to my mind. 
1999 World Cup semi-final, South Africa, Australia, Australia with Lance Klusner. And then, of course, that another game between South Africa and Australia, that 400-plus game. Johannesburg. Now, we know that a World Cup is different. A World Cup game is different, particularly a semi-final and a final. The extra pressure gets added on. It's very different to uh, a normal ODI game. So, do you think this is the best the world has seen so far in your uh, recollect memory or, or the memory you could recollect? I think uh, if, if it's not, if it's, it'll be closer mm. to be the best game. I mean, you correctly mentioned. I was to go say, say the Australian South Africa game at Johannesburg where mm. 400 runs out. So 434. 434 and the game was tied. Yes. yes. Uh, and um, whereas this game is, you know, probably probably will refresh our memory for a long time for the emotions that we, that we saw, especially at the grounds of the, all the players. So I think uh, World Cup you know, can't get uh, bigger than that. I can uh, probably the best game. Probably yeah, I'll probably agree with you. Mm. Do you like to have a word on India because everyone spoke about an India England final, and uh, New Zealand somehow came from behind and got rid of India and very nearly yeah. became the world champions. I what think, are your thoughts? I think the half an hour what they spent the first ten over, first seven overs. That's where we lost the game. Rohit Sharma, Rahul, and uh, Virat Kohli. Three wickets, I think uh, Rohit Sharma. Six were four there. Yeah, Rohit Sharma mentioned in an interview that mm. half an hour of cricket, half, an, an, of half an hour of madness yes. of entire World Cup campaign cost them the game. And deservedly, they should have been, uh, you know, in the final. But taking nothing away from Black Caps, mm. they've been a magnificent. Losing, in, I can remember losing against England at Durham. Mm. They were just steamrolled by England. But since then, they were consistent. They had bits and pieces of all the performance. They didn't have one star batsman making big runs. Or everyone chipped in. And especially even yesterday, as you saw, I mean, everyone chipped in in a small contribution. That collective 241 runs, I thought it was a winning, uh, you know, decent score in that wicket. Yeah, it looked a good, good score actually with uh, people talking about it being a World Cup final and the added pressure. But, um, well, I don't know whether words can describe that game. But anyway, we need to move on. Let's get a little bit more happier because the World Cup final did not really involve, the Sri, involve Sri Lanka. So there was Kumar Dharmasena and uh, Ranjan Madugal in, in actually directly involved in that game in the officiating part. But Sri Lanka's team of uh, Sri Lanka emerging team of South Africa, I think they have done tremendously well, and uh, they did win four out of yep. six games. Now, that's not what excites me. What excites me is about the individual brilliance of certain players. I've been handed over a list here. Chari Tasalanka, 244 runs in seven games. Well, Patum Nisanka, he, he did flourish towards the end of the tour, but still quite good, 238 runs. Shamwa Shan, 190 runs. Ashin Bandar, 182 runs. Sandun Virak Kodi, 179 runs. And Ramesh Mendes, 153 runs. Now, in the bowling department, lots of fast bowlers. Asita Fernando, 12 wickets in 6 innings. Chamika Karunaratna, 9 wickets in 6. Lahiru Madhushanka, 9 in 6. Then, there is Amila Aponso, who's got 10 in 7. And, of course, Kamidu Mendes and Ramesh Mendes also chipping in. Now, you have seen these players. Yep. And is this a reminder, is this a little nudge by some of these players to, to kind of get national recognition? If so, whom would you kind of pinpoint? I think, I mean, all the names that you mentioned, all, all are in contention. Not, even not, if, if it's not for the national team, at least for the A-team level, mm. for surely they will uh, walk in, especially winning a one-day series in South Africa against yeah. two competitive teams. It's uh, always hard. And uh, very well led by Charitas and got to be said. And also, we shouldn't forget uh, head coach Shamin Dawas, who is uh, first time uh, working as head coach for the first series winning it. So happy for him as well. I mean, overall, Roshan, some of the names we are here, they've been, been knocking on the door for a while in the domestic uh, circuit. And it's, they're getting exposed in uh, foreign conditions and they're doing well. So that's a 
huge uh, plus point for them as well as Sri Lanka cricket going forward, especially you know uh, thinking of 20, 2023 World Cup mm. going. I mean th that's the planning should start from now. So I think all these guys we just mentioned yeah. are probably in the uh, reckoning. Okay, that's as far as the uh, emerging trophy or the emerging team is concerned. And let's uh, at home. Well, there's going to be an under-19 super tournament, inter-provincial super tournament, comprising of four teams. And the tournament starts on the 16th of July and uh, it ends on the 23rd of July. It's all played in Dambulla. It's played also at uh, Candy. Candy and Gaul. And oh, no, it's just, just Dambulla. Dambulla, Dambulla and Candy. Dambulla and Candy. And I can tell you the good news is that there will be a few selected games that will be televised by the Papare.com. But... First question is, why four teams? I mean, surely there's a lot more talent amongst the uh, Sri Lankan under-19 school cricketers. That's one of my issues even when it comes to the senior provincial yeah. tournament. How many players are missing out? You're a selector. Tell me about it. I reckon, I mean, Super 4 uh, concept, which is started about four years ago, and uh, they're mainly uh, targeting the centres, which is Dambulla, Candy, Gaul and Colombo. I mean, ideally, to be honest, five teams, yes. Conceptually good. I, I get your point about the uh, centres of excellence. I, I agree, that's all fine. But let's look at the bigger picture. I'm asking you as a selector. You, at best, can select 60 players. Yep. We've got close to 7,800 Sri Lanka, under 19 cricketers. <laughs> How, I mean, is it fair that you, 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 you don't pick more than 60? That's all my question is. You can come up with any concept and say this, this and this is the reason. But is it correct practically? I mean, it's 60 plus uh, 20 reserve players yeah, as well. Yeah, but they, they don't get a look. Uh, I, mean, uh, yeah, they, I mean, they are there just, just in, case, there in, case, in case if an injury occurs to the, uh, yeah. one of the 15 member, yeah. they'll be replacing. And also... They have about another 40 odd players, which we uh, listed in the draft system. Altogether, up close to 100 players. They, some of them uh, were were unlucky, got to be said. But just that, you know, that's the rules been given. Four yeah, teams, I and agree. we got to pick the four teams, and we pick the best teams. Um, we had uh, 21 players play the Pakistan series, so they didn't play the uh, inter-district tournament. But whoever did well in the district tournament, everyone was in the draft. And in the draft system, there was a pr process picking the players up. So ev everyone was. Uh, quite aware the rules and regulations going forward picking the players and it was up to the captain the coach the provincial selectors the national selectors everybody was there and uh, you know they picked the squad and they they, they balanced their squad in a way where every, every every base is covered so i think i mean I, I agree with you i mean it's unfair on some of the players but just that that's how the cricket goes yeah i don't i don't in any way point a finger about the selection i'm sure you've done a brilliant job but it's just that sometimes you feel for some of these players who have performed and for the sake of some you know, rule or a, or, a, or a plan or a system, but some of the good cricketers just miss out, which is a shame. Uh, as I said, I believe that even in the senior level, uh, a five-team inter-provincial tournament is is more like like it for me because it's 75 players, and I, I think you'll have a better mix. Anyway, that's for the administrators. That's for people like him. This is just my thought, mm -hmm. and I thought I'll share it with you. Well. We are almost at the end of the show. Just to remind you, you need to visit the papare.com where we still have that special hub for the, uh, which was created for the World Cup. That is uh, www.thepapare.com slash CWC19. You must visit it because now with what happened in this last World Cup final, you will have lots of information that you could derive out of it. So make sure that you visit that. Now, the question of the week is, which New Zealand player won the player of the World Cup title other than Kane Williamson? Tell us the name of the player who's won a World Cup player of the, uh, what should I say, won the player of the World Cup title other than Kane Williamson. Uh, let, let me re-present the question. I got confused, so I'm sure you might be confused too. So let me read the question again. Which New Zealand player won the player of the World Cup title other than Kane Williamson? Because... Ken Williamson was a judge, the player of the tournament in the recently concluded 2019 World Cup. That is the reason we ask you. Now, last week's question is very unfortunate. I feel sorry for this guy. <laughs> Who is the last player to take a hat-trick against India in an ODI and then be dropped? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at him. Fabish Maharuf. It happened in 2010. I must ask you, what happened? How did that happen? <laughs> 
Gone Who was the, the chairman of selectors? <laughs> <laughs> Gone are the days, I mean. No, but we, we, we have the right to ask you and find out what happened. And you got the right, now you, is the opportunity to speak your mind. No, it's been nine years, I can't, forget, I, I can't remember. <laughs> Yeah, clearly, uh, clearly one of the best days, but unfortunately that was the last game and was out for the team for about two years. So, that's how cricket goes, isn't it? Well, that's how cricket goes. You're right. Uh, it can be very tough on you, but then it's, I like the way you look at it. You know, you look back and just accept it. That's because I believe you're mature now yeah. and as, as a youngster then you would have felt hurt. But the answer is Fabis Maruf 2010 and Mallika Jaya Surya. Congratulations. You are the winner. Now, I must also remind you to keep up with more original sports content. Make sure that you subscribe to thepapare.com. So, that's the story on Around the Wickets on thepapare.com. Thank you for joining us. We'll be with you again very soon. Until then, it's goodbye from both of us. <laughs>